how do we make sure that the technology that we have access to and that we have an ability to invest in can begin to narrow the divide that has been created by inequality, all forms of inequality. And for us, therefore, one of the big challenges that we are trying to think about is how do we narrow that band so that all of us can be able to have a fair shot in life. But how do we do it in a way in which it can be environmentally sustainable? A low carbon future, a future there where everyone has access, a future where if you are young, you have as much a chance of living whether you're born in Senten or you're born in Hamanskral. So if, if Africa does not really figure it out in terms of how do we respond to the digital challenge and in particular issues of inequality, it's not like we'll catch up in another five years. That's it. For a hundred years, you would have lost the game. It means that those countries, those societies uh, that have been able to integrate whatever technological advancements that they have to the social issues that they have will continue to make a lot more ground than we may have been able to do as a continent over the last couple of years. We can't introduce technology for the sake of technology. It must mean something. It must have the right social impact. If it can solve practical problems, then it's kind of not useful. It's very cool to have very cool ideas. However, how do we make sure that we can begin to use them to solve problems of education, of health, of backwardness, of disease, all of the things that actually afflict the society that we have? We also have a lot of resources as a continent. So much as Africa's story is that of inequality, but it's also not a sorry story. We have human ingenuity, just the resilience of people to want to make a difference and to see things through. We have seen what technology has been able to do. I mean, mobile technology has literally transformed the continent uh, over the last 20, 25 years. Even somebody who could not read and write all of a sudden can send you a please call me. So that person has been modernized just like that. The please call me way of communication was actually created in South Africa or prepaid as a form of getting people to access telecommunications around the whole world was created in South Africa and it's become an instrument which you can now use to get a whole lot more people to be part of the telecommunications platform and as a mantra we all need to believe that nobody else should be left behind the trouble with the previous industrial era is that it was fundamentally premised on other people must move ahead and other people must be left behind. And it is not a sustainable society which evolves like that. And fortunately, technology gives us the opportunity for all of us to move forward. And as smartphone begins to penetrate, as new technologies begin to come in, we need to really think about what the role of the digital revolution will do to enable all of us uh, to go forward. Education is the key, and we really believe that as a company. We believe that the education sector can really benefit from injecting ICT capability, not only to transform how it's being consumed, but also to transform how it is being delivered. It is absolutely possible, and I'll give you an example. There's a school up in Limpopo that has not had a maths teacher for more than two years. However, that school gets a maths lesson every day because a teacher in Johannesburg, when he's giving a maths lesson to his school, that school gets connected, and the kids of the same school in Limpopo get exactly the same maths lesson. There is no longer an excuse in terms of why other people can get access to some of the resources that will make them better and a lot more effective. One of the things that we're finding is that even the way and the skills of today may not be relevant to the needs of tomorrow. South Africa has 11 languages. We will now be investing quite a significant amount of money in what we believe is the 12th language, which is coding. How do we make sure that everyone between the ages of 17 to 25 has an opportunity 
to learn how to code. Because actually, in a world of Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, robotics, devices that talk to each other, if you don't understand and speak that language, you will really be left behind. And therefore, it is fundamentally important for us to make sure that there is a layer of people that are coming behind us, and it doesn't mean that the people who are here, their time is up, but lots of the people that are coming behind us who need to learn, we believe, the language that will sustain them for the next 100 years. So we'll be investing, and we've pledged to start a tech fund, largely and singularly focused on teaching young people between the ages of 17 to 25 coding. We've pledged to invest 250 million rands over the next three years. We want to, if we can, treble. No, you, you, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, it's not the money, really. All right. It's much more than that. It's the commitment, it's the passion, it's the energy. There's a bit of fire on the continent. There's a, there's a spark. People want to make a difference. There's a lot of goodwill. So even before you worry about how much money you need to put in, our view is that there's already a sound platform that is very fertile for something dimensionally different uh, that can be done. We therefore think that we need to start to build on that strength. And we are not very pretty as a company that we want to have our name on top of it. Uh, if the cause is right, if the idea has been well thought through, and people want to try and fail and try again, we're willing to partner with uh, anyone else who really believes in this fundamentally, who wants to change the country as fast as we want to change it. So finding African solutions to African challenges is a very important thing. Uh, the rest of the world is, is dealing with their own problems. And I think we need to find a way in which we start dealing with our own problems. Uh, firstly, we need to understand them because by not understanding them, we may have the right solutions. Secondly, we need to care deeply enough about the continent and about the country to want to solve its problems because you don't solve a problem of something that you don't really care enough about. It's never going to happen. But if you really, really care about that specific problem, you are the propensity for you to be able to want to solve it and solve it in a way that works and sustainable is a lot more higher. So that's very, very important for us. As Telcom, we're doing quite a lot in investing in these future skills. We've begun the journey of finding solutions to our problems, finding solutions to our challenges in a way that we can be able to find sustainable outcomes going forward. It might be small, but actually if the little project that we have in town produces at least 300 coders a year, that will begin to make a big difference into the rest of the market in terms of the number of people who can be software programmers going forward. If we can be able to support at least 100 startups a year in different technologies, uh, we think that that begins to contribute not just in creating jobs, but actually creating businesses, creating sustainable enterprises of the future. But we need you to also stand alongside us as well. Whether you are in business or in academia, whether you are a student or you run a startup, whether you run a fund, whatever it is that you do, how can we be able to stand shoulder to shoulder and seek out a new path and a new way of solving the challenges that we have? And if we do that, we think that Africa will rise. All right. We think that the future will be different. And for us, we always try to think about it in very simple ways. If we do all of this, will it leave the place better than we found it? And thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks. <laughs>